Uh, my name is Keith Knox. I work for Boeing. I live in Hawaii and I work for the observatory that's on the top of Haleakala on Maui. Well, I've been working for many years in imaging and my expertise is in the area of trying to improve the quality of an image. So I worked for many years with Xerox working on documents, uh, documents for commercial world. And now I'm working on images from space and the Archimedes palimpsest is another example of uh, images from documents that need help. The thing that the images uh, from space and images from documents have in common is they've all been converted into digital values. You bring those values into the computer, you can manipulate them, you can, you can prove the quality or extract information from them, see things that you can't see ordinarily by manipulating those numbers and pulling out the information. Actually, in the last half century uh, of the previous century, the 20th century, the, there have been tremendous uh, changes and revolutionary changes in terms of uh, what you can do with digital imaging. Uh, by bringing the images into the computer, you can do things that you couldn't do with photography or just see with the naked eye or see with a microscope. You can bring out information you can't see otherwise. The human eye sees uh, a range we call visible light, which is essentially from blue to red. And uh, there, there's lots of electromagnetic radiation you know, way beyond that. And the ones that we typically think of are what you call black light or ultraviolet light, which is beyond the blue. And beyond the red is infrared. And if you go far enough, you think of it as heat. The cameras have sensitivities in many ranges. And uh, the ones that we work with are covered in the visible range, but they also extend beyond. And they can see things uh, starting to go into the infrared. So they can actually see parts of the document in, in regions of light that the eye can't see. When we first experimented with the palimpsest, we were just trying to see if we could capture some of the original writing that was on it, just to, to show what it was. Like, for example, one of the things we saw was the word Archimedes. And when we saw that and were able to pull it out with ultraviolet light, you know, it was, it was really dramatic. What we found really worked with the scholars was to produce what we called a pseudo-color image. And a pseudo-color image takes the, the ultraviolet image that shows both characters, both writings in it, uh, very well, and an image in which it doesn't show the Archimedes text at all, one that shows only the overwritten text. So now we have these two images, and we put, um, we put those into color by taking the image which the Archimedes doesn't show, and it only shows the parchment where the Archimedes was. And you put that into the red separation, and that means it, it shows up as red in the final output image. The Eucologian text, or the overwritten text, and the parchment themselves show up in all three of those color separations. So they show up as neutral, and they come out uh, a black or neutral gray. And that ends up giving you nice sharp text in both cases, uh, you have a good contrast of the text against the parchment. The parchment and the overwritten text are both neutral and don't show up very well. And the Archimedes text shows up in a nice bright red. And that just makes the text visible and the scholars just pick it up and read it directly. Well, the first time we did a pseudo-color image and, and gave it to one of the scholars to look at, uh, and he compared it to the standard ultraviolet image we were producing one that he had been using routinely, the ultraviolet image. And his reaction was, I'm not sure why, but I can see more in the pseudocolor. I wasn't sure why either. It, clearly, you could see more in the pseudocolor. It, it took another year of study to understand where it was and why that was working better. But the answer was, the pseudocolor image was putting much higher contrast information into the image, and therefore making the writing more legible to the scholar and easier to read. One of the exciting things about working with the, uh, this particular project is that we're breaking new ground. And every time you, you come in and you think you know what needs to be done, you find that there are new problems and they have to be solved before we can go on. So it's a steady challenge of coming up with new solutions to problems you haven't seen before all the time.